I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we take a look at gaff tape versus photo black. Gaff tape has been associated with being a filmmaker's best friend, but in the past couple of days, from what I've researched, I found out that this is actually totally wrong. In fact, you shouldn't be using gaff tape almost ever. Now, before going into detail, I'm not going to sit up here and pretend like I haven't used over an ass load of gaff tape in my life. But I asked a couple of seasoned Gripen Electrics just yesterday, and they basically said that photo black was more of the norm. I personally have never used photo black, but I will from now on because of the following reasons. Number one, gaff tape can't be used on regular wallpaper. I've actually made this mistake in the beginning of my career. I had taken a piece of gaff tape and I had put it on a piece of wallpaper. At the end of the day when we wrapped, I went to go pull the gaff tape off and I pulled the wallpaper with it. It's not my proudest moment, but you live and you learn and you move on. So in a nutshell, don't put it on wallpaper. Number two, you can't put gaff tape on hardwood floors. Hardwood floors have like a lacquer varnish finish to it. And when you put gaff tape on it, it will actually pull it up into little pieces. Number three, you can't put it on paint. Now I kind of feel like this is a little bit debatable because I've been in two situations where I put gaff tape on a wall, pulled the gaff off and nothing came with it. The wall was absolutely fine, but I've also been in the other situation where I've pulled the gaff tape off and little tiny specks of paint came with it, exposing the primer that's actually on the wall. So I think it's a little debatable, but it, it, it might depend on the type of paint that's used um, and how many layers there are. But otherwise, let's just be on the safe side and say, don't put it on paint. So let's take a second to think about that. You can't put it on paint, you can't put it on wallpaper, and you can't put it on hardwood floors. That's basically saying that any interior shot that we have at somebody's house, we can basically rule out gaff tape because gaff tape has a very strong adhesive, which sucks ass because I love gaff tape. However, there is a solution and it's called photo black. Photo black is actually paper tape or painter's tape. Um, it's actually only a couple dollars cheaper than gaffer's tape, which in my opinion is complete bullshit because, well, I guess, I, I mean, I guess that's supply and demand, but still, it's too much. The upside to photo black is that it can be put on everything and not damage it. It doesn't have that tough adhesive hold like gaff tape, and it doesn't rip as cleanly as gaff tape, but it's a much safer solution than possibly damaging someone's house. Now that I've talked about the dangers of using gaff tape versus photo black, let's throw one more tape into the mix. Just regular old black masking tape. It's basically got the same benefits as photo black, except it's more of a functional, not fashionable approach. Now, photo black is a little bit pricey, being only a couple dollars less than gaffer's tape, which is why I'm bringing up the black masking tape because it's about 10 bucks a roll. One thing to be aware of, though, is that masking tape, unlike photo black, has a reflective surface. So if you are greeking, this might not be a good option as it could reveal that something is obviously hidden to camera versus photo black, which is consistently matte black. However, if I'm spiking a stand, making a sign, making an arrow, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to use the masking tape because it's cheaper and it does the exact same job. So the next time you go to tape something, ask yourself two questions. Number one, can I do this with masking tape and get the same effect as photo black? If the answer is yes, use masking tape. If the answer is no, use photo black. But before you go using the photo black, ask yourself this question. Number two, is photo black strong enough for what I need? Now, if you answered no to both of those questions, bring on the gaff tape. But just to be clear, that needs to be your absolute last resort. Now that we've gotten these three out of the way, let's talk about a couple of tape tips. Here's a tape tip about tabbing. When you rip tape off of a roll, don't just tear your piece off and walk away. Tab it by folding the tape so that you basically have a triangle of the same sticky side stuck together. Then push the triangle against the tape roll, and now you have a straight edge on the tape roll that you can use to rip your piece off. This will make it easier to find the end of the tape quickly next time you need a piece. After all, we've all tried this type of method before, and I think we can all agree that it sucks ass. Now here's another tip about taping cable to the ground. I'm using gaff in this situation, but you can pick your poison. Start off by placing a piece on one side, enough so that the cable is almost secured. Then go about six to eight feet down the cable and stretch the cable until it's straight and do this again. You'll repeat this until you are out of cable to tape over. Then on one side of the cable, you will go about three quarters the width of the tape over the cable, attaching the cable to the ground. You'll do that on one side for the entire length of the cable. Then on the opposite side, you will do this again. That way the tape is overlapping itself, protecting the cable from being disturbed from unwanted foot traffic. Now this is a pretty easy way to burn through an entire rape. Rape? Was I about to say rape there? Holy cow. Now this is a pretty quick way to burn through an entire tape roll, um, but chances are if you don't have rubber mats or a cable crossover, this is something that you might end up doing, so it's still a pretty good tip to know. Next, this is more a tip about gaff tape, but you can actually rip it into sections. Not only can you rip gaff vertically, but you can also rip gaff horizontally. That way you can fine tune the perfect amount of gaff that you need with almost no effort at all. <laughs> 
Number four, avoid putting tape on stands. This may seem like no biggie, but sometimes people forget to take tape off the stands, and if a person tries to lower a stand with tape on it, the tape could get stuck inside of the riser, and the stand will now have to be disassembled to get the tape out of it so that the stand can work correctly again. Honestly, you'd be surprised how often it is that some idiot comes along and completely disables a stand with nothing but tape. <laughs> I'll never do that again. Okay, so I think that's enough tape talk for the day. Now let's move on to the main event, the winner of a brand new Mafer clamp. Go. So congratulations to you. I will be in contact with you very, very soon. As for the rest of you, better luck next time. But if you liked today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on my Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you every week right here on Grip Tips.